everyone, it's Seth, probably better known as Zephron Olive, and it's time for another Instant Deck Tech. So as you know, Wednesday means it's Wild Card Wednesday here in Instant Deck Tech Land, and we have a super sweet list to look at today. So a long time ago for Budget Magic, we played Troll Worship, and apparently Troll Worship, well, kind of an updated change version of Troll Worship, is back, and it took Air Farmer to a 5-1 finish in a recent Modern Challenge on Magic Online. So congrats to Air Farmer on a super sweet deck. A quick re reminder before we break down troll worship for modern if you enjoy this deck and you want to see it made into videos take a minute click the like button the subscribe button leave a comment anything you can do to support your deck because whichever deck is most popular gets a shot at being made into videos next week so troll worship is built around Worship. So Worship is one of my favorite cards for mana enchantment and basically as long as you have a creature any damage that would put you below zero life instead puts you to one life. So this locks a lot of things out of the game. Some decks just straight up can't beat Worship plus a creature on the battlefield. Uh, the troll part comes from troll ascetic and even though we don't really have troll ascetic or any trolls in our deck, the idea is still the same. To get hexproof creatures on the battlefield so our opponent can't kill our creatures, they also hopefully can't kill our Worship and then we are able to just almost not die to anything. The problem with Worship is it only interacts with damage. So something like Collective Brutality, which causes loss of life, uh, Vapor Snag, which causes loss of life, loss of life effects, Bump in the Night, things like that can kill you through a Worship, but we got a plan for that too, and that is Leyline of Sanctity. Almost all of the effects that would drain your life are going to have to target you. So if we can get a Worship and a Ley Line of Sanctity out, Ley Line of Sanctity covers the few things that Worship doesn't cover and pretty much just makes it so we're not going to die. We just like can't die to anything unless our opponent kills our Worship or kills our Ley Line of Sanctity. We also have one last super sweet piece to the puzzle and that is Privilege Position which makes all of our other permanents have Hexproof. So this is awesome. It's like Super Troll, the troll part where we need the Hexproof creature. Privilege Position makes all of our creatures into hexproof creatures but more importantly it also makes our worship and ley line of sanctity hexproof which means our opponent can't target them and kill them with some enchantment removal spell or a anguish unmaking or a maelstrom pulse or whatever if we get two privileged positions out it's even harder because they give each other hexproof so our opponent can't even kill our privileged position to then try to kill our worships and ley line of sanctities so we just kind of lock it out of the game altogether and since all of these pieces worship Leyline of Sanctity, Privilege Position, our enchantments, we have the full four idyllic tutors to tutor out whatever piece of the combo we're missing. If we have a Worship, we can get the Leyline for protection. If we have Leyline and Worship, we can get the Privilege Position to protect our Worship and Leyline of Sanctity, or a second Privilege Position to protect everything. So Leyline's the card that just kind of holds everything together and make sure we have our combo locked in as often as possible. As far as the creatures, we do have one actual hex proof creature in Sylvan Carry added works really well with worship play it on turn two ramps us to four mana on turn three so we can play our worship plus it's hex proof so fatal pushes and path to exiles and all that stuff can't get through our Sylvan Carry added and destroy our worship lock then we just have a bunch of mana dorks noble hierarch birds of paradise wall of roots just all about ramping so we can cast our idyllic tutors quickly to get our privilege positions and once we get down a privilege position remember all of these things are sort of trolls. They don't regenerate, but they all have hexproof, so it's going to be really hard for most things to kill them. Our opponent's going to need, like, a sweeper or something to actually kill our creatures. And then we have Dryad Arbor, which is nice because it's a creature that we can fetch out. So if our opponent somehow does deal with our board, let's say they cast a Wrath of God or a Day of Judgment or a Supreme Verdict or an Anger of the Gods, sweep away all of our creatures, we can always just leave a fetch up, fetch out the Dryad Arbor, and then, oops, we got a creature again. 
we're not going to die because of worship and privilege position and all of our lock pieces. Course of Crew Fix for a little value off the top of our deck. And then the last most important piece is Heroic Invention. This one we just leave in our hand. It gives our stuff hexproof, which is nice if we don't have privilege position. But the big deal here is it gives everything, all of our permanents, not just our creatures, indestructible. So that kind of cuts off the final out. We get the worship locked in. We get Ley Line of Sanctity to protect us from stuff that worship doesn't protect us from. We get privilege position to turn all of our creatures into trolls with hexproof so our opponent can't kill them easily. That kind of gets our opponent down to one out, and that is a sweeper like a Wrath of God. And Heroic Intervention is our out to that sweeper. Our opponent thinks, oh, we finally got you. We cast our Supreme Verdict. We're going to get rid of this lock, lightning bolt your face to win the game, or attack you and win the game with our Celestial Colonnade, whatever. Heroic Intervention fizzles that plan as well. And like I said, Dryad Arbor kind of does the same thing too in conjunction with Fetchland. So Heroic Intervention, the last piece to the lock. And then as far as actually winning the game, that's the other concern with this deck. We do have a ton of Fetchlands. Like I said, super good for Dryad Arbor to get after a Wrath or something for Worship. We have our Shocklands to fetch out. The big one though is Westville Abbey. So for actually winning the game, we only have two plans. One of them is actually fast. That is Westville Abbey. Eventually, we will make tokens with Westville Abbey. We'll flip it around into a 9-7 flying indestructible, blah, 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 blah. Beat our opponent down in just a couple turns. So that's plan one for winning the game. Plan two is going to take a long, long time, but that is Mistful Planes. We can fetch out our Mistful Planes and ever so slowly keep putting cards on the bottom of our library, putting our fetch lands that we sack on the bottom of our library. Sooner or later, our opponent's going to run out of cards, but we won't run out of cards because we got the Mistful Planes and we will actually mill our opponent out. But hopefully, we can just do it with Westville Abbey because the Mistful Planes plan is going to take a super long time. As far as the sideboard, Sigarda Host of Hurons is another card that kind of cuts out some outs. So with all the protection, all the pieces we got in our main deck, we could still lose to sacrifice stuff. If our opponent has Liliana the Veil or some sort of mass sacrifice effect that gets rid of all of our creatures, like in All is Dust, for example, that would still be able to get through our lock. But Sigarda shuts down that out because spells and abilities our opponent's control can't cause a sacrifice permanence. So even if our Drowsy Tron opponent casts an All is Dust thinking they're going to finally get out of this lock, Sigarda cuts that off as well. Also a really fast finisher in the air. Five flying hexproof power in the air. Closes out games fast. Greater Oromancy gives us even more privileged positions, essentially, except it doesn't save our creatures. It only saves our other enchantments. Rest in peace to fight graveyard deck. Solemnity, very confused about this. I thought about it and thought about it. The best I can figure is this is an answer to Ratchet Bomb, which would be another out to the lock. Our opponent can just tick it up, tick it up, tick it up. It gets around all of the targeting. It gets around pretty much everything. So I think Solemnity comes in in Ratchet Bomb matchups because we don't really have any specific synergies with Solemnity in our deck. And then Beast Within, just some general removal, can hit Tron lands, can hit Planeswalkers, you name it, it can kill it. And that is Troll Worship, or maybe Troll List Worship for Modern, and that's our instant deck deck for today. So thank you very much for watching, I hope you enjoyed the video. And I will talk to you soon. Thanks for watching the video. If you enjoyed it, help us out by clicking that like button down below. And to keep up on all the latest and greatest, click that subscribe button. And don't forget to hit that bell icon to get alerts whenever we have new videos. And if you want to, check out some of our other sweet videos here and here.